Madison is my name. At 29, I work in an office. About three years ago, I happened to run across my husband Joja, a classmate from middle school, at a cafe, and we exchanged contact information. I was out by myself watching a movie the day we first met. Since we reside in a tiny town, practically everyone attends the same enormous theater for movies. While returning, I happened to spot Joja at the cafe in the shopping center where the theater was located. He was seated at a table next to mine. The scenario resembled one from a comic book. I even questioned whether it was destiny. Even though we shared contact information at the time, we didn't talk much. However, a few years later, we went to a school reunion together, and it was there that our friendship started. A year into our relationship, Joja proposed to me since we still bonded and we got along well in the past. I was beginning to feel pressure about being in my late 20s, maybe because we live in a tiny town where people marry early, so I accepted the proposal right away. I love Joja, of course, but in retrospect, I wish I had given him more space to grow as a person. Having always lived with his parents, Joja finds it nearly impossible to clean the house. I used to live alone and have my own style of doing things, therefore I would much rather do everything myself than accept mediocre assistance. I do all of the cleaning, all I want Joja to do is take out the trash and clean the bathroom. However, I went into a hectic phase at work a month ago and started putting in more hours. During this busy time, there is even more work than normal because a coworker recently took maternity leave. I have less time to do housework as a result, which tends to irritate Joja. At last, Joja let out all of his displeasure. I was so tired when I got home and heard Madison say, enough is enough. You didn't even wash my outfit, which I'm scheduled to wear tomorrow. It only has to be thrown in the washing and let to dry. Because I arrived home late yesterday, I didn't even have time to wash the laundry. Since I was pressed for time this morning as well, my aim was to finish it as soon as I got home. And yet another dinner to go. That's what he said when I brought home some takeout after working late again today. Even when I apologized, Joja didn't seem to get over it. Really, when I get home, I'm exhausted too, and this is how you treat me? As he spoke, Joja let out a deep sigh. When I heard that, my blood began to boil. Pardon me? So why not lend a hand a little bit with the household chores? You just need to toss it in a washing machine and hang it up to dry, isn't that right? Why don't you try doing it yourself if it's so simple? And wouldn't it be possible for you to occasionally deliver dinner? We're splitting the expenses, so it's not like you're helping me out monetarily. Stop moaning, I'm doing all the duties you can't. Even though I blurted it out, I felt a little relieved that I had spoken up. Joja, of course, had different thoughts. Should a wife speak like that? That remark turned me red all over again. By what do you mean? If I were a stay-at-home wife, I would take such action. But wouldn't it be difficult to survive on your salary alone if I quit my job? We discussed that I wouldn't leave my work once we got married, and you said you would too. Did we also pledge to support one another when things get busy? Joja exhaled at that point. That's so Madison of you of. Why not work alone if you are so eager to work? The women should be the ones organizing the home. In contrast to you, Madison, my girlfriend makes handmade cakes, helps out around the house, and always has a clean house when I visit. I froze at that moment. What did you just say? Wait, sweetheart? Regarding whom are you speaking? A former partner? Or are you in a romantic relationship? Joja grinned as my mind raced with a million ideas. You realize you've aged. In addition to being gorgeous, she is the daughter of the CEO. Her parents inquired if I would be interested in taking over as CEO and even encourage our relationship. Then Joja unexpectedly brought divorce documents so please fill these out. Tomorrow, I'm going to leave. I was taken off guard and my thoughts were frozen in shock. Give it a minute. Are you claiming, Joja, that you are having an affair and that you will divorce me in order to wed your mistress? Joja chuckled in jest. Yes, it is correct. I'll even pay you anything you wish to pay. I mean, I'm the CEO of the future. Do you really think I'll just sign the paperwork and take this? I shot back, but Joja didn't seem to care. Do you want to continue living this way then? You believe that living with someone who is exhausted from work and chores and has lost all compassion for you and yourself is fun. Unsure of what to say, I stammered. Still, he was correct. The only thing stressing us out was our loveless relationship. I gave it a lot of thought, but eventually I stopped caring about thinking. I said, impassively, fine, but after I've worked out issues like alimony and ASA division, I'll file for divorce. You'll have to wait as I'm now too busy with work. With a frustrated expression, Joja answered, prioritizing his job every time. Here are the papers I'll leave. Tell me when you filed them. 
Then he headed to the bedroom from the living room. After a while, things at work calmed down, and I was referred to a lawyer by a friend. The attorney, a divorce specialist, after hearing my experience, we made the decision to request higher than usual alimony. Joja agreed to the price, which surprised me because I had expected him to haggle. Is he actually a candidate for the next CEO, as reported? Though I had some regret, I chose to go on. If I'm making a respectable amount, I might as well treat myself on a solo vacation to recharge. After Joja moved out a month and a half ago, the empty apartment began to seem lonely as work was winding down and the alimony talks were coming to a close. I made the decision to migrate. It's too big for one person and feels empty, so there's no use in hanging around. Fortunately, I can now take time off from work, so I should relocate as soon as possible. I went to a realtor and signed a lease for an apartment near my workplace. A week later, I relocated. Since Joja was the owner of the apartment, I had to let him know about the move. The next instant, he gave a call. Do you honestly believe that leaving our flat, which is packed with memories, is the correct decision? Living alone in a foreign area isn't it lonely? You might as well live in the past because I'm sure you haven't forgotten me. Joja treated me with such contempt and looked down on me because of his haughtiness. Yes, it was difficult to deal with these unexpected happenings, but I saw that my anger increased as the days stretched into weeks. I knew that my feelings for Joja were gone. Joja never listened to me when I told him that I'd moved on. All he ever said was haughty comments like stop hiding it or don't act too hard. Could you simply pay the alimony soon? I was so irritated by the conversation. I can file the divorce documents as soon as you do. Yes, I understand. I'll pay you this week so have the divorce paperwork ready. I currently live in a hotel since my girlfriend's parents feel that we shouldn't live together until after we are legally married. I also quit my work. I guess we're in a recharging period right now. Joja has reportedly stopped his work since moving out in order to focus on his new career. Subsequently, he expressed his desire to file for a marriage license, throw a lavish ceremony, and begin their married life in the father of his mistress's mansion. He needs to turn in the marriage license quickly. Additionally, he claimed that the two families had already met but there seems strange about his account. It is strange that Joja's parents, who are trustworthy individuals, would approve of the second marriage proposal. Even prior to the divorce becoming official, Joja did not provide a clear response when a question, therefore the truth is still unknown. Perhaps more than I do, Joja's parents also wish for him to remarry the president's daughter. This was a little upsetting to me because I felt that I had developed a respectable relationship with my in-laws, but it's meaningless now. I hung up the phone and told him I'd get in touch with you after I filed the divorce paperwork. After receiving the alimony, I filed for divorce a few days later. I may now formally cut my ties with Joja. He answered me when I got in touch with him in a frantic, understanding manner. Based on his previous remarks, it seems likely that he will tie the knot again shortly. To switch things up, I went mall shopping the following day. I happened to run upon Joja by chance. Someone from the front of the mall called out to me as I was going around it. Madison, are you getting older again? You now actually do appear like an elderly hag. It was Joja who appeared to be speaking when I looked up. The biggest mall in the area is this one. That's where the movie theater is and where Joja and I used to meet again. I regretted my poor timing. Joja chuckled mockingly and continued, Today, I got remarried to the president's daughter, Skylar. She's gorgeous and makes the perfect wife, unlike you. Just as he was finishing his sentence, a woman with shopping bags came up to Joja. So this is the daughter of the well-known president. She's obviously gorgeous, but our eyes met when I noticed her name sounded familiar. She also appears a little taken aback. Is that possible? Unaware of my presence, Joja carried on conversing. You know, the corporation that is owned by Skylar's family. Let's go, disregarding Skylar's muttering. I learned about Skylar's family from Joja. I am going to be the company's next president. Is it really true? Joja muttered something, and I couldn't hold back my laughing. Joja, wearing a blank expression, and Skylar, averting my eyes. You've already had another marriage. Well done. Your spouse is quite lovely. She doesn't appear to be the same age as myself. When I mentioned this, Joja appeared perplexed. He would, of course. Without his knowledge, I had brought up his new wife's age. I couldn't stop giggling, my sympathies. I then turned away from Joja and began to move, but Joja pursued me despite Skylar's attempts to stop him. What does this mean, Madison? Do you know her? I informed him that we both went to the same high school. We were in the same class. Well, her face wouldn't identify her. Joja expressed shock. 
It's fortunate that you have a stunning wife, but she should be after all of the cash she spends on cosmetic surgery. Actually, Skylar and I were classmates in high school. Her features didn't immediately identify her, but when Joja mentioned Skylar's relatives, it did. Skylar has always bothered me because she flaunted her money. Because of my accomplishments in the sports club, I was rather well known back then, and it seems Skylar didn't like that. She used to make fun at me and say a lot of other things, such that I wasn't feminine because I belonged to the sports club. Because Skylar was always making fun of other people, a lot of our classmates hated her. Skylar, who hadn't gone to the reunion, was the talk of the town. It seemed that she had undergone plastic surgery to address her facial anxiety and was now a frequent attendee at parties. Do you recall the girl that Joseph said was ugly when he saw my diploma album? I remember telling him she was the daughter of the CEO. Joja became pale upon remembering this. She may be wealthy, but I wouldn't want that face. He had added that he became red-faced and yelled at Skylar as the memory went back to Joja. Were you lying to me the entire time? A furious dispute erupted between Joja and Skylar. It appeared from their dispute that they had connected at one of these events, and Skylar was utterly enamored with Joja. In a stunning display of boldness, Skylar shot back saying, I didn't lie, I just didn't say because you didn't ask. Just as Joja was ready to lose it, Skylar interrupted. I've been waiting for you to end your relationship with Madison, your current girlfriend, for a long time. In addition, it is agreed upon that I will work for my father's business. I'm even able to afford a fancy apartment. It is now relevant. Realizing Madison is your girlfriend is the worst part. What a little world it is. I sensed a problem. Joja, is it true that Skylar is unaware of your divorce? Joja quickly attempted to hush me at this point but I told him that I had previously been married to him and had filed for divorce the day before. Skylar could not find words. I went on. In fact, I told Joja's mother about the divorce yesterday over the phone. She informed me that she was unaware of any remarriage, much less having met Skylar's parents. I considered tracking down Joja's mistress and suing her for damages, but I decided not to delve into Joja's affair because he accepted a payment that was greater than the going rate. To believe that he was concealing his marital status, isn't that a form of marital fraud? They went pale and started bickering a little, so I made the decision to leave. A few days later, Skylar got in touch with me via classmate. Please don't share this with anyone, and I got paid a certain amount of money that she called compensation for my troubles. I guess it's more like hush money. However, getting compensated for keeping quiet was a bonus, and I had no plans to tell anyone anyhow. At that point, Skylar yelled at me about Joza. It seems that Joja hired parents from a family rental service instead of his real parents for the meet and greet. Although the existence of such a service startled me, it made me question whether Joja was merely pursuing the CEO's job or had any intention of marrying Skylar. Even though Skylar was in love with Joja, it wasn't clear if Joja was drawn to Skylar's appearance or social standing. When Joja realized that Skylar, who had since started her married life, was completely incapable of doing home tasks, he became very angry. Her housemate was responsible for her freshly painted interior and baked goods. Ultimately, Joja and Skylar filed for divorce virtually right away, and Joja was sued for marital fraud. Skylar revealed the truth despite receiving hush money, and it seems her father was furious. Joja was said to be having trouble adjusting to life in this place. He was at his wit's end now that he was working day and night in a modest apartment. I was asked to give over the divorce settlement to him. I had to reply, you have to be kidding. I don't intend to be of any assistance to you. I hung up, never contacting me again. Since then, I've taken a personal recharge period using my accrued paid time off. I traveled alone and had new experiences. Wonderful interactions occurred, and I have a sense that the future of my life will be fascinating.